Hi everybody, it's me, Elliot from ETJ English. Today, I have a list of some very British words. How to pronounce them, how to use them in context, and of course, what they mean. Uh, do remember that although these are very British words, in my opinion, they can be used in other forms of English, and you may find you hear these in American English. I do find that these words in particular are used a lot in the UK, and some of them would be considered to be extremely British. And of course, as always, remember the accent I teach when it comes to pronunciation is a modern RP accent. The accent I use is very common in the south of England. There are many other accents available, and don't be afraid to explore and learn those as well if you prefer them. Let's get straight into the lesson. I don't want to waste any time today. And the first word I want to talk about is one which people have been saying, Elliot, why haven't you taught this word yet? It's such a common word in the UK. And to be honest, I don't really know why I haven't taught it. Uh, the word is bloody. I guess I assume that all of you already knew this word because it's always associated with the UK. Oh, bloody hell. You know, we say it a lot. It's generally used as a curse word. We'll say, oh, bloody hell, maybe when something bad happens or something annoying. We also use it as an emphasizer. We use it to emphasize maybe a feeling or emotion. For example, oh, that film we watched last night was bloody good, wasn't it? Pronunciation is interesting because we have the uh sound, which I find about 90% of the students, no matter where they're from, uh, who join my course, tend to have a problem with pronouncing this sound. And the sound is uh. Most of my students pronounce it as ah, so they'll say bloody instead of bloody. The key is moving the sound more towards the middle back section of the mouth, so pulling the tongue back slightly. So the middle of the tongue slightly pulls towards um, the lower section of the mouth, but we're keeping it in that middle lower section towards the back, again, near the middle and the back. Uh, uh. Try not to smile, just open your mouth vertically. Bloody. Bloody. Another word I thought I'd talk about is the word scrap. For example, the dogs are having a scrap. That would mean that, let's say I have two dogs and they're fighting each other. A physical fight. I could also say uh, my friend went to a club last night and he got into a scrap with someone outside. Meaning they got into a fight. They were having a scrap. So it means to have a physical fight. Scrap. Firstly, let's talk about the vowel, a. Ah. Another sound which many students find quite difficult to pronounce when they join my course is the a ah sound. Many of them pronounce it as e. Eh. So they might say screp. You will want to push your tongue forwards and down. Open your mouth nice and big and wide. A, ah. a, ah. scrap, scrap. So with this consonant cluster at the beginning, we're producing the s sound. Then we're cutting it out with a Sk, sk, and then we're adding another consonant, so a third consonant into this cluster. R, scrap, scrap, scrap. So you can have a scrap with someone, which means to have a, a, a physical fight. But the other form of a fight could be a row. Now a row is when we have a vocal argument with somebody, so no physical violence involved. Usually it's just involving uh, your mouth, speaking, shouting at each other. For example, my friend called me last night and he told me he had a really bad row with his wife. Okay, so a row or to be rowing uh, is to have uh, a vocal argument. Row. So of course, make sure you can pronounce the r sounds. Uh, many of my students will say row or lao. Uh, because they have difficulty pronouncing the letter R. So it would be useful to learn how to pronounce that consonant. And also the ow diphthong. We're starting with an a, and then we move to a round shape. U, ow, 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 row. Now, another one I expect probably most of you know is cuppa. Cuppa. Now, to have a cuppa is to have a cup of tea. It's a very common expression here. For example, do you fancy a cuppa? Cuppa. So here we have the uh sound, which again, we're slightly pulling the tongue back. We don't want ka, we want ka. And also we have a schwa sound at the end. So uh, 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 cuppa. So we're practicing the uh and the uh. For the uh, the schwa sound, the tongue is more in the middle of the mouth and we don't really do much with the mouth. Uh. So uh, uh. Look at how my mouth changes. Cuppa, cup. 
cuppa. So it's just a short way of saying a cup of tea. Very common word here in the UK. Do you fancy a cuppa? Now how about the word snog? Snog. To have a snog is to passionately kiss someone. This is a word which we use in the UK, particularly the younger people will say, oh, did you see them? They were having a snog last night. Okay, snog. You know, maybe Americans would say to make out, right? To make out with someone. Uh, we tend to say snog, s sound, and then we're cutting it out with a n sound, snog. The o sound requires a round shape with the mouth. O, o. We slightly pull the tongue back. O, o, snog, snog. Now, if something's a bit naff, naff, then that means it's not very good. For example, oh, that food last night was naff. Just meaning it was a bit rubbish, just wasn't very good. Again, rubbish is a common word, but I've spoken about that in the past on this channel. So naff just means not that good. So the key here is the ah sound again, tongue forwards and down, ah. And then finish with a th. Push your top teeth on your bottom lip, th, And push the air around and through your mouth. And uh, it should be unvoiced, naff. Naff. That was naff. What about knickers? Knickers. Knickers are the lower half of ladies' underwear. So the K is silent, just like in knife or knackered, which is another word I spoke about on the channel in the past, to be very tired, knackered. But knickers, again, we don't say knickers or knife, we say knickers. We start with a N sound, N. Tongue up against the top of the mouth and make the noise through your nose. N knickers. Now we don't want to say knickers. Again, a very common mistake is when my students pronounce the it sound as an e, and they'll say eat instead of it, for example. So we don't want knickers, we want knickers. So the problem is that people lift their tongue too high in their mouth and kind of spread the cheeks too much and it becomes an e sound. You just need to slightly, just slightly lower the tongue a little bit. Eh, eh. Keep the tongue in the top of the mouth, near the front, kind of just behind the sharp edge of the top teeth. Eh, eh. So, e, eh, e, eh. Knickers. And we're finishing with a schwa sound before the z. Uz, uz. So we don't want knickers, because that would be more of an American pronunciation, pronouncing the R. If you're going for more of a southern or RP British accent, you'll want the schwa sound, uz, instead of ers, knickers. One of my friends told me that he fluked his driving test the other day. Now, to fluke something means to do it by luck. So someone might say, oh, congratulations on passing your driving test, and they could say, ah, oh, it was a fluke meaning it was luck. I don't know how I did it. I didn't really do very well. It was just luck. I don't know. Um, so fluke. Again, fl, fl, consonant cluster at the beginning. F and L, fl. Top teeth on the bottom lip. F, push the tongue against the top of the mouth and flick it back down. L, fl. And then, ooh, ooh, look at my mouth. Ooh, I'm lifting the tongue backwards and up slightly. Ooh. And then we finish with a k. Fluke, fluke. So that's to kind of do something by luck. And maybe if you fluked your test because you didn't think you'd pass it, you might be chuffed, chuffed, which means to be really happy and pleased with yourself. So for example, oh, I'm well chuffed is a common expression, well chuffed. I'm well chuffed. So again, we have the uh sound. We've talked about that already. Um, of course, you need to try and pronounce the cluster at the end. Ft, ft. Top teeth on the bottom lip and cut it out with a t sound. Ft, chuffed, chuffed. So those are your words. I hope you found them useful. Remember, if you want to join my course, talk to me on WhatsApp for feedback and advice and questions. You're welcome to join at etjenglish.com. And for the rest of you, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye.